Hello, everyone. I'm Ken Wong, and I run the Solution and Services Group at Lenovo. This is the first of my new series of video interviews where I sit down with incredible minds shaping future of industries, businesses, and innovations. Today, we'll be talking about something that impacts all of us, healthcare. I'm honored to have a very distinguished guest, Dr. Loie Mack, a leading expert in gastroenterology and hepatology with groundbreaking research in liver diseases. She has also won several global awards for her work. She's also driving real change, leading hepatitis C microelimination effort in the region. In fact, she was recognized as one of the top outstanding young person of Hong Kong in 2024. So Dr. Loi, so when you look back your journey, right, so what are the success formula and also maybe some of the lessons learned that you would like to share with our audiences? The journey began with the curiosity in health and diseases when I was a teenager. So studying human biology, the passing of my grandparents, and the experience of keeping pets collectively triggered my desire to become a doctor. And I also realized that even after I graduate, I still have to study very hard to keep up with the very uh, constantly updating scientific breakthroughs so that my patients can receive the most uh, forefront uh, up to standard care. Hey, Louis, uh, you know, I, I come from technology industry, right? So I have been always curious about, you know, how can we apply technology to achieve better outcomes? So when it comes to healthcare, um, you know, what is your perspective about, you know, how technology is able to help, especially uh, around diagnosis and, and treatment? Technology has really driven major changes in healthcare practices, as simple as how healthy people detect diseases by their smartwatch, for example, to tell them, oh, you have an abnormal heart rhythm. This is already infiltrating in our daily life. I would like to mention a few words about artificial intelligence in healthcare, which has also been a hot topic recently in, in healthcare. So um, machine learning for image classification has affected quite a few areas in medicine that involves the use of medical image. For example, in my specialty, which is gastroenterology, we can use an AI system to detect and characterize a lesion on endoscopy. So when I do endoscopy, I will see a screen that looks at the inside, the real image of the colon of the patient. And when we implement AI software in the system, the software can highlight areas of abnormal uh, um, lesions to alert the endoscopist whether this could be suspicious, that it may say, okay, 90% suspicious, you may consider take some action. And then the ultimate decision will still rely on the endoscopist to, to decide what to do with that lesion. So um, this co-pilot approach between the AI and the doctor can improve diagnosis and improve patient outcomes. There are also a lot of ongoing research on how to use non-image data in AI. So I can foresee that if this technology can get further into healthcare, is that they can help to build up drug discovery. I think this would be very exciting for, for us to shorten the time required to discover new drugs for diseases that were known to be difficult to treat or incurable. Well, that's great. I think, uh, well, a, a few things, right? Uh, you know, I think the, the, the advancement in uh, non-intrusive uh, uh, diagnosis, right, or, or tactics, I think, you know, is, is a great thing to me because when I, when I try to convince my parents Right, to do some checking. They always say, I don't like the needle. And so I think that would be a great thing. The other thing you mentioned a lot about the, uh, the machine learning and deep AI uh, in helping the diagnosis and, and treatment much better than before. And indeed, you know, we have been working with a lot of different uh, you know, healthcare institutions around the world uh, because you know, we have you know, high-performance computing, which is the fundamental uh, to provide the computing power as needed by all these work. And, and before that, I think there are two challenges. One is it is expensive, difficult to implement. Um, second is it's not super environmental friendly because a lot of these high-performance computers are you know, very power demanding. Right? So there's a lot of work that we have done in terms of you know, how can we make the high-performance computing more accessible uh, to healthcare and to different industries. And the other work that we have been doing is we have a, a patent technology called Neptune, uh, which is you know, about how can we make sure 
you know, we achieve the highest, um, you know, energy efficiency, uh, for example, by using uh, warm water in terms of cooling, right? Sometimes you, use, you, you know, you the other implementation where you need to use uh, cold water. There's a lot of energy consumption, but our technology is able to use warm water uh, uh, cooling technologies called Neptune. Uh, so there's a lot of things that I think uh, on one hand, we as a practitioner in the uh, technology industry is able to contribute to some of the great advancement that you just talked about in the healthcare industry. So one thing that I would like to understand more is, you know, again, with technologies, you know, how do you see technology play a role in terms of bridging the gap, right? Helping, uh, helping us, helping the industry make you know, the healthcare as needed by the, uh, you know, underprivileged, uh, more accessible uh, and achieving better outcomes. So healthcare gaps do exist in many, many systems. Uh, I think in different systems, they have their distinct, uh, distinctive problems. So in Hong Kong, the bulk of people still rely on publicly funded hospital authority services. We can watch, which, read, read the news every day saying that how long the waiting time is for clinics. I think to improve the accessibility of public health services is not only to sort of the manpower problem. I think technology can also help. You know, nowadays we, when we see patients, I think 80% of time is for a doctor is to spend on looking at the reports, interpreting the imaging, and to typing all these results into the computer system. And then the rest, uh, the, the remaining um, very minority of time can be spared to communicate with, with the patient. I think technology can help in this way that it can help to distill the information and then to provide a doctor a concise summary of all the health data of the patient so that they can make a recommendation to a doctor. And again, it's the doctor to make the final decision on how to approach and how to manage the patient. But in that sense, it can spare the doctor from the low-level repetitive work like clerical typing stuff to the more high-level um, quality patient-doctor interaction. Um, as you know, in my work, it would be people who live with hepatitis C infection. And um, instead of waiting for them to come to our hospital because of low disease awareness, we go in with novel portable devices and also novel test kits mm. so that we can test for them, we can work up for them in their premises that they feel comfortable to stay in. In that case, we can then make the healthcare resources more accessible to them. So I think technology has helped us a lot to move the big bulky machines and the complicated tests into more handy, easy, portable devices so that we can take it into the community. Hmm. Well, I, I think this is actually very insightful because you know the, the edge devices, right, be it a PC or a smartphone or even a tablet is becoming you know, much more powerful and, and also at the same time, uh, much more affordable, right? So I 100% agree that you know, this kind of technology uh, 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 availability will help to, you know, make it more accessible, you know, to people who might not have the resources to, uh, you know, you know, go, uh, you know, with the world class, you know, uh, uh, healthcare system like what we have in this city. Uh, now, you know, come to the last question. I think, um, well, you are a very successful uh, person and also a doctor. Uh, I also hear earlier on you mentioned uh, you know, you're, you're hardworking at the same time. Uh, you're very eager to learn. You study hard, not just passing an examination, but to equip yourself with the, the latest and, and, and the greatest, right? So any tips that you could share with us? I learned from uh, senior experts in my field, my colleagues, and even my students, because I constantly learn from my students because um, I think they are... They are um, facing a much more uh, difficult or more um, um, uh, information explosive era that they can not only read books, but they need to grasp information from multiple sources. So I always learn from them on how to distill this information and get the really reliable and um, uh, information that they should learn to become a doctor. And beyond medicine, I talk to um, global leaders like yourself and beyond my field so that I can learn about the global trends because eventually that would affect all sectors of the society, including healthcare. So thank you, Dr. Lowy. And if this discussion got you thinking, stay tuned for more conversation with leaders driving change in businesses and beyond. Lenovo, Lenovo.